I'm at Gortby in Lincolnshire. The cockles are crowing and I'm in the churchyard of the delightful little Georgian church in the village. Just to the south of the church in this direction there was once a very large country house called Gortby Great Park. There's no trace of it now except for the stable block. According to Nicholas Pevsner the house was built by Matthew Brettingham in the 1750s as the home of the Viner family. You may remember the Viners from my video on St Edward's Crown. The estate here was purchased in the 1660s by Sir Robert Viner, Charles II's banker and the person responsible for the creation of the crown jewels. As we will see as we go into the church, there are lots of things to remind us of this family within it. As you can see the church is outwardly very simple. It's built of brick with stone dressings and on a stone base and has a tiny little tower with a cheeky little copper spire on top of it. Although all is simple outside, the church interior is more elaborate, although it is still a rather restrained bit of architecture. It's Palladian in style and I suspect the church may well be the work of Matthew Brettingham too. It dates from 1756 when he had just completed work on Gorby Great Park. The main feature of the church interior is the Great Chancel Arch, which is flanked by two massive fluted pillars, a feature beloved of the classical architects of the 18th century as they emulated Palladio's emulation of Roman and Greek architecture. There is a decorative entablature that runs around the inside of the church and heavy set window frames. The chancel arch leads through to a shallow chancel which is, as we will see, built on top of the burial vault of the Viner family. The patron of this church was Robert Viner who died in 1777, who like many country gentlemen was also a politician. He was MP for Great Grimsby and Lincolnshire for nearly 40 years and for most of which time he was of the Whig faction. The cool rationality of the Palladian style we see here was beloved of those with Whig sympathies in the 1740s and 50s, particularly by those men who had been on the Grand Tour. You see this style of architecture and immediately assume the patron was a Whig. The restraint of the architecture has been somewhat relieved in the 20th century by painting the walls lemon yellow and by the numerous, dare I say rather kitsch, images of devotion that have been added when the church was of the Anglo-Catholic tradition. In the chancel are a couple of monuments that really shouldn't be here at all and were brought to Gortby in the second decade of the 18th century. They commemorate two prominent members of the Viner family from the 17th century. The first is that of Sir Thomas Viner, first baronet, who died in 1665. He was the founder of the family's fortune. Born in Gloucestershire, he was apprenticed to the, a London goldsmith and his firm were the bankers to both Charles I, the Commonwealth and King Charles II. His nephew and business partner was Sir Robert Viner who created the crown jewels for Charles II and also paid for this monument to his uncle by the sculptor Jasper Latham which was originally in St Mary's Woolnerth where he was and presumably still is buried. Sir Thomas was Lord Mayor of London in 1653 and he is shown here reclining, wearing his civic finery and the Lord Mayor of London's chain. On the other side of the chancel is a matching effigy, also by Jasper Latham, of a young man and this is the monument to Sir Thomas Viner's second son Thomas who died in 1665. This monument too, according to the inscription on it, was paid for by Sir Robert Viner. At Thomas's death the whole of his interest in the banking business of his father Sir Thomas passed to Sir Robert. Sir George, the eldest son of Sir Thomas, being disinherited it seems. Sir Robert Viner also gets a mention on a floor slab in front of his cousin's effigy as I mentioned in my video on St Edward's Crown, Sir Robert Viner ends up eventually in financial difficulties as Charles II decides to close the Exchequer and the thousands of pounds Viner had lent the King were written off. Many of Viner's estates were sold to service his creditors but Gortby was one of those that survived and was in time bequeathed to Sir Robert's nephew Thomas 
who died in 1707, and then descended to Robert, his son, the builder of this church. Robert, the builder of the church, and successive generations of his family are buried below white marble markers in a burial vault below the altar and the chancel. One of those buried in the vault is Frederick Viner, who died in 1870 at the age of 23 and was buried here beside his father Henry, who had died 10 years earlier. The story of his death is a tragic one. He was on holiday with eight companions in Greece and they were travelling to visit Marathon. On their way, they were taken hostage by brigands who thought they were wealthier than they were and demanded a ransom. Frederick's mother, Lady Mary Viner, and others attempted to raise a ransom, but it was too little too late. Troops were sent from Athens to rescue them with orders not to fire. However, some of them did open a fire, and in their panic the kidnappers killed young Frederick and two of his companions before then fleeing. It seems that it was after Frederick's death and his burial here that Gortby Great Park was abandoned by the Viners in favour of their other house, Newby Hall in Yorkshire. The house here was demolished in 1874, four years after Frederick's tragic death. Perhaps the place was too full of memories. His entire family in time were buried here with him. His brother Reginald, who was a Liberal MP only months later, his brother Henry was laid to rest in the vault in 1882. And finally, his mother was laid here too. Near Newby Hall, Viner's mother erected a church in his memory using the funds raised by the ransom. Christ the Consoler at Skelton, designed by William Burgess, it is one of the finest Gothic revival churches in England. However, Henry lies not there, but in this forgotten place among his ancestors. The double-decker pulpit in the church in Gorby is said to be the pulpit from the medieval church in Skelton, demolished when Christ the Consoler was built. So there you have it, a simple little church in the Lincolnshire countryside, but this church is a repository of memory, and dig just a little, and this church has a story to tell us of the people who passed this way, and the changing face of this village. Those people have left behind their mark in the beauty of the art and the architecture, and that beauty and those stories are what make our English church buildings so very precious. Thanks for watching.